Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. The last video in this chapter is about our mystery specifiers. These are the modifiers that we weren't really able to explain in the previous um, unit when we were talking about X-bar theory. We were able to distinguish complements from adjuncts quite well, but specifiers remained a bit of, mi of a mystery. And in fact, the only specifier we had was uh, a determiner. But then in this uh, chapter, what we've seen is that determiners are not, in fact, specifiers either. We got rid of our basic notion of what uh, could possibly be in a specifier position. So do we need these positions or not? There's good arguments to think that what we do, that we do in fact need um, specifier positions. They're where we put subjects or subject-like elements into phrases. So for example, um, when we have um, a DP with a genitive possessor, and when we have a TP with a subject in it, those are items where those, um, those subjects are in the specifiers of particular phrases. So the subjects of a uh, clause is in the specifier of the TP. The possessive of an S genitive is in the specifier of DP. So maybe we should extend this to all categories. What specifiers do is they serve the purpose of being subjects. So there's one piece of evidence for this that is quite interesting. It's a particular kind of embedded clause that you don't find, um, it's not well described in the traditional grammatical literature, but it's when uh, an embedded clause lacks any kind of tense or auxiliary. Um, they typically only follow um, certain predicates like consider or want. And we call these constituents small clauses. They consist of a subject and a predication, but there's no um, copula or you know, be verb to, it, to indicate um, the relationship between that predicate um, and uh, the subject. So take, for example, I consider Peter a fool. There's an embedded clause here, Peter a fool. Peter is the subject, and a fool is the predicate phrase. It's the property being assigned to Peter. I consider Peter foolish, same thing. Foolish is being uh, uh, the property attributed to Peter. I want Peter in the play. In the play is where Peter is going. If these clauses were standing on their own, we would have to put the verb to be in. We'd have to say Peter is a fool, Peter is foolish, or Peter is in the play. But when it shows up without that verb to be, we have what we call small clauses. And small clauses are essentially defined by their lack of any kind of tense inflection or verbal structure. So what's going on in these? Um, one thing that's important to note is we have to figure out where that subject of that embedded um, non-verbal, non-tensed uh, predicate is. So um, don't worry for the purposes of the rest of this class about drawing small clauses or identifying them, but they serve an interesting role for us in showing us that specifiers really are subjects. So um, as I've mentioned, they have no verbal inflection, and they don't have verbs, um, and they typically don't have complementizers or tense phrases. So where does that subject go? Well, the answer to that is it goes in the specifier of those other constituents. So here's a sentence with, um, John considers Peter a fool. The, uh, there's, two, there's really two clauses here, uh, even though uh, one of them doesn't have a CP or a TP. The main clause is the higher up um, CP and TP. Bill is the subject of that. Um, S is the head of the um, 
the S suffix is the head of the TP, and it's going to lower down and attach onto consider via affix hopping. But the rest of the sentence is this DP, Peter a fool. And what we have here is a small clause. We have um, in the structure, we have a subject and we have a predicate phrase. So the subject is Peter, and Peter is being attributed to the property of being a fool. Where does that noun phrase sit? It sits in the specifier of that DP. Another example we had was Bill considers Peter foolish. Here, again, we need a place to put that subject. It sits in the specifier of the adjective phrase. And then we have the prepositional phrase. Peter, uh, Bill wants Peter in the play. Where's Peter? Peter is showing up in the specifier of the PP. So this notion that specifiers are subjects goes a long way to explaining um, the property of small clauses. It also explains why we have specifiers. It's where subjects go.